I'm Melissa Torres. And I'm Marmy Leach. And, and this, this is Moving, Moving with, with Mel and Marm. Welcome, welcome to today's episode. I was about to say good morning. And good like, morning. It's actually it's not the morning. It might be morning when you guys are watching this, but it's not morning right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it's a lovely Thursday in April. It is. We are super busy right now. April's like usually our busiest month. Yes, April, May for sure. Yeah. It's um, it's crazy. You got a lot of deals going on? I have a lot of things working. Yeah. So people are done, I think, being scared of the interest rates yeah. and are just ready to move. Yeah, So because they are what they are, and I don't think they're going to change anytime soon. Right. And so seeing like more multiple offers, things moving faster, um, so it's been... I don't know, it just change from how it was six months ago. Yeah, six months ago was a little slow. Yes. I am a better agent when I'm busy. Like, when I'm not busy, I just, I don't know. I, like, don't think as critically. I feel like when I'm busy, I'm, like, on it mm-hmm. all the time. Yeah, you have, when you're busy, you have to, like, keep in your systems. You can't, like, yeah let things fall off. So it's good to be in a routine. Yeah, it's really fun. Okay, we thought it would be really fun today to talk about what to do when things go wrong at your house. Yes, and how to be prepared for when things go wrong in your house. So, you used to be a prepper? Well, I mean, I kind (laughs) of am still a little bit of a prepper, okay? (laughs) But, um, yes, I definitely come from my dad is really big about being prepared for natural disasters, which I think is a really good thing. Okay. We're not, we're not building a compound in the country with steel walls and like guns and everything, but, uh, we definitely like are prepared with like extra water and, um, canned food and stuff like that. So I saw on TikTok, um, a, Something that you could build in your garage, like you dig down and it, it's a tornado shelter. Oh, that's and cool. And I thought, I thought of you, actually. You did? You I thought did. of me? Thank I was you. like, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like Melissa might put this in her yard or something. Like, she's prepared. Yeah. So when we did our bathroom remodel, we really wanted to have like extra space to have like a safe room. I would love to have a safe room in my house. Yeah. That for, would be cool. For tornadoes. I mean, we're in Texas. There are tornadoes. My middle child is very scared of tornadoes because he was four in the 2019 tornado okay. that was like two miles away from our house. Yeah. And so he has like some trauma from that experience. Yeah. I, I think it is good to be prepared. It is. I, you know, it's interesting. I grew up with a basement. We don't mm. really have them here. Right. And that's where we would go for tornadoes Mm -hmm. so now you just need to find a place in your house that doesn't have an exterior wall or a window if you can find that yes we go in our laundry room and it's very small but we take and we've had a few tornado warnings the past couple years so we'll Mm -hmm. take the girls our au pair will come with us the dogs it's Mm -hmm. crammed in there and we'll sit on the dog bed just for a little comfort. Yeah. But I ended up putting two water bottles in there and a wind-up radio just in case. Well, good. Yeah. Two water bottles. That's not going to – you're not going to make it through 24 hours. <laughs> you know, you know uh, it, it's all I could fit in the laundry room. That's so funny. <laughs> so um, we – I was looking at houses with a couple moving here from Columbia. And um, they are with a – like a relocation company that I work with. And – they get assigned a relocation consultant as well as an agent. So we were like looking at houses and the relocation consultant was like, oh, look, here's your Harry Potter closet underneath the stairs. And I looked at it. I said, that's a tornado closet. <laughs> like, let's be real here. That's what that is. Yeah. <laughs> tornado. Or but you could put books in there, I guess. You could. But yeah, that's where. It's an aesthetic tornado closet. Yes. It's a Harry Potter tornado closet. Yes. I thought this would be an interesting topic because, you know, if something crazy happens, you're like, what do I do? You have the inspection. Mm -hmm. So you think that you're going to be fine because you're like, okay, the inspector said all these things look good, but things just happen. 
Right. Just because it's working during the inspection doesn't mean that it's going to work forever. Totally. And there's stuff that like, I mean, I just had an inspection and the HVAC is like super old. And so, yes, it's working right now. But the conversation was, this is not going to work forever. (laughs) Yeah. And hopefully you're going to own the home for a long time. Right. So when I was 23, I bought my first home and Ryan and I did together. And I had owned the home for probably like a good six months. Yeah. Six to seven months. I was like a homeowner at that point. I was like legit. Yeah. Um, Established homeowner. I I was established. (laughs) I knew what I was doing. Okay. I had planted plants and painted. Okay. I knew what I was doing. So I came home. At the time, I was also uh, taking improv classes. Okay. So a little segue there. And... I came home and I started walking to my bedroom and all of a sudden I looked down and there's water on the floor. And I'm like, this is weird. Like, did Ryan spill water when he was going to bed? Because it was pretty late at night. It was like almost midnight. Okay. And it was right next to the bathroom. So I went to the bathroom and looked. I didn't see anything. Well, I opened that closet door and like water is spewing out of the water heater that clearly is old and it's coming on the floor. It's like, pouring out and I'm like oh my gosh I'm freaking out so is it like boiling hot water it wasn't boiling hot no it must have not been working I have no idea like (laughs) I wasn't a realtor then I didn't know what was going on (laughs) it's like what is this big circular thing okay so I I didn't know what to do and so Ryan went and got a wrench well the connection this is something you should look for the gas, like, or the shutoff connection was so old that it was rusted. We couldn't turn it. So we didn't know how to get the water off. Um, so all I could think of was calling my parents, like, six times and waking them up in the middle of the night. Oh, they probably thought that, like, someone was in an awful accident. Yeah. And they don't <laughs> even live here. <laughs> they live in Florida. Well, so- <laughs> you know, but that's the thing. It's like, who to call? You call your dad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But what was I thinking? Like, they could help me. And they were like, call a plumber. (laughs) It's like, oh. So if your water heater bursts, first of all, make sure that connection, you can actually turn it off. Mm -hmm. That'll make a difference. Yeah. And so turn it off. Same for a toilet. If your toilet's overflowing and you can't get it to stop, just turn that connection off Mm -hmm. at the toilet. And call a plumber. Great Don't advice. call your parents in the middle of the night. <laughs> you know, that is one thing about new homes or if you're like remodeling your home, like the whole water cutoff for the whole house where it's like very easily accessible. Because yeah. like in our house in Dallas, we don't have that. Like you have to cut it off at the meter. Yeah. And um, my husband was on like a dad's uh, text group text message thread and somebody had a leak under their house and like water was like flooding. Oh God. Luckily it was like, I think flooding the crawl space, not their actual house, but um, he had to run over with a water key. Cause it's not just like an easy, like turn it off. It's like a get the meter. You have to have that special key yeah. and then turn off the water. Well, same for when we had that ice storm mm-hmm. people's like, as things were thawing all of a sudden, Water's just pouring out of random ceilings and walls in your house. And people are like, what's happening? Yep. And people couldn't figure out how to turn it off because, like, you know, the houses are old. We never really, like, had to turn them off. Right. So. Yeah, it's not anything that you, like, normally think of. But now that we've had, like, multiple freezes recently, I feel that people do know how to do it now. Yeah. And if you don't, find your water connection and know where to turn it off Yes. At. That's one thing. And get a water key. We have had our water heaters fail. We have two water heaters and they failed, like both of them failed within a week of each other. But luckily we caught it when it was just like leaking a little bit in the pan. Yeah. So we didn't have any like water damage from that. But we have had an instance where the condensation line in our HVAC, like the primary line was clogged. And so the secondary condensation line, it drips in the pan and then goes out the second yeah, secondary. Yeah, that happens. Well, our pan was cracked. So oh. we had to deal with that. Not fun. That is not and fun. And who to call with that is an HVAC company. So did they have to lift up the whole HVAC and put a new one underneath? No, this one's suspended. So it it's just like, it connect, like the pan is like hanging off of the unit. So it's not... 
it's more accessible. But, you know, it's still a pain to do that. Yeah. It's like the stuff that you don't really – it's not fun to spend money on. When you, like, are thinking about your house, you want to spend money on paint and decor stuff, not, you know, an HVAC pan. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Station pan. <laughs> but, you know, it's important. You want you want HVAC. Yeah. Okay, what about if there's a hailstorm? Like a crazy hailstorm where clearly something – like, it's probably dented your roof. It's dented your fence. Who are you going to call? Yeah, so a lot of times after those, you'll get, like, all these calls from roofing companies. We're going to be in your area for a free roof assessment. Yeah. So it's important to find, like, a company that you trust um, because at a lot of those times, there's, like, companies that will come in from out of town and just, you know, you want an established roofing company. Yes. Especially if they give you a labor warranty. Mm-hmm. If they haven't been around, if they're just brand new, how do you know they're going to be around in five years? Right. So, yeah, it's it's interesting after a hailstorm how many roofing companies will knock on your door. I have even had roofers call me on listings. Yep. Like, can I get on your roof and take – dude. Yeah. Like, there wasn't even a bad hailstorm. Yep. They I just... mean, I get it. If there's, like, a big hailstorm, yeah, like, sure, let's do it. Obviously yeah. – I'll ask my clients first, but yeah, just a small hailstorm, like just randomly calling listings to see if they could take a look. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause the thing is it's going to cost deductible for the seller. Right. And actually, did you know that insurance, pretty much all insurance carriers are going up to a 2% deductible for roofs mm-hmm. from 1% to two. Oh, what's happening with insurance in Texas is like crazy. All right. What about a gas leak? Call Atmos. Yeah. They're going to turn off your gas and that's going to suck. You're going to need to go to like a hotel or an Airbnb or something for a little bit. But better than getting poisoned. Or blowing up. Or blowing up. (laughs) Yes. That too. That's not funny because it really happened, but. Oh, like when it happened a couple years ago? Yeah. That was crazy. Yeah. That's why the gas has gone up so much because they're like replacing all the infrastructure. Oh, I did not know that. Mm Mm-hmm. Ooh, I just thought of one more. What about when your electricity goes out and you can't get your garage door open or your electric gate open? So Has that ever happened to you? Like, I, I I think I had like a hair appointment. I was like, I cannot get my car. I can't get my garage. It was in a different house. And for some reason, I couldn't manually get the garage door open. Well, so I don't have that problem because our garage is a storage unit. So. Oh, that's right. <laughs> and a gym. And a gym. I think most people have that. Oh, man. That is my goal is to get my car in my garage. What Although if, I don't even know if my car would fit in my garage. You've never tested it. I've never tested it. I don't think your car is going to fit in your garage. It's extra long. You should measure. I should measure to see how see bad really I need to done. clean my garage. <laughs> Could you imagine, like, going through all of that to, like, get everything? Because we have a lot of big, bulky stuff that we have to get rid of. It's not just, like, organizing boxes. Yeah. And then to just pull in and your car doesn't even fit. I know. I mean, these are completely first world problems, but that would be awful. Yeah. I would be really mad. Mm -hmm. So I will measure my car. Measure your car. All right. That was fun. Stay prepared, people. Yes. Until next time.